This is the best strike I ever made. It's such an improvement from the last one. In this video, we'll finish the steering and I'll uh, introduce you to the partner that helped manufacturing the parts for the steering, Giga, and we'll test the trike to know what are the specific aspects of the design, geometry, and construction that make it so much better than the last one. But I figured out there are three things that need improvement. Spoiler alert, I tested a little bit too hard. The good news is if those things get improved, I think we have a product worthy design. Let's go. Before starting the tests, we have to figure out the steering and that is turning versus tilting. Let's figure it out. So a problem that became obvious was bump steer. When the suspension moves, the steering moves as well when you don't want it to. And I noticed too, when I tilt, the outer wheel moves inwards more than desirable. So I make this setup, which allows me to see it more clearly. And there you can see when it tilts, only the outer wheel moves and it does the win. And this is just super undesirable. This has to be fixed. I do you know, a bunch of tests with the multiple brackets and um, with different brackets it's worse or better and uh, I just need to figure this out. I've been trying many things. It's really useful to print brackets and they really started with none of them has cracked or anything yet. So I've been able to test all these brackets to finally come to a conclusion. And that is that the connection to the steering has to be inside to the upper ball joint. Now, from this point, I just have to fine tune it, but to keep the Ackerman while tilting, if this connection is to the inside of the upper ball joint, then I'm on the right path. And after many tests, I have a setup that works perfectly. And I know that it works perfectly because I do tight turns, wide turns, turns with more or less tilting, and there is no scrubbing of the wheels. It's super smooth. I also decided to replace the parallelogram with this simpler connection. I noticed that other trike manufacturers do it like this, so it had to work, and it does. Now that this is working to do the test properly, have to replace these plastic parts and this screw thingy with some proper parts. I partnered with Giga for the manufacturing of these parts. They are a custom parts manufacturing platform that connects you with suppliers around the globe and allows you to communicate directly with them. You communicate with transparency with the supplier, exchange notes during the process, and you feel that it's reliable. The response time is super fast, so it's a very efficient system. In the end, I got the parts perfectly made, CNC machined out of aluminium. I highly recommend that you check out Giga if you want something custom manufactured. Thank you, Giga, for supporting this project.
and let's install the center part and then the connections. The steering is always the Achilles heel of my builds. I end up designing one thing and building it and then making something else. After the tests, I'm going to talk a little bit about the steering and uh, you will understand why this is so hard for me. Well, this is the finished form of the open source Talpo Tilting Cargo Drag. If you want to download the drawings from my website, they are the final ones. All that there is left is to test and tell you what I love about this build and how it's better than the last one. I will go over the improvements quickly, but most importantly, I will explain in detail the three things that need to be improved. All right, I'm ready to tell you what's so much better in this design from the last one. But let me just start by talking a little bit about the tests. Uh, if you've seen the last build, you know that I've done a bunch of tests with Slalom to test the maneuverability and how much it turns and so on, and testing different things. And now I haven't done different tests with Slalom because it just turns so sharply, it doesn't matter anymore. So what happens when you start having a better build is, uh, well, you tend to go faster and uh, sort of in harder terrain. Not that this is meant to be a mountain bike vehicle, but I'm actually a big fan of off-road. When I was a kid, I used to, well, it was my favorite sport, really. I mean, either with a bike or an enduro motorcycle. And uh, now I'm making a cargo trike and I still want to take it off-road. What I mean is with the improvements, I just want to go faster and harder to test the limits, which is were extended. So there are four things that are major improvements, so let me tell you about those. First of all, the frame. The previous was made of steel, this one is made of aluminium. The whole thing, this one is 32 kilos, the other one was almost 50. Some people love steel frames, sure they're more durable, but if you want to make something proper, aluminium is just going to be better. Number two, the drive unit. Now I have a mid-drive and this is torque controlled. So when you apply some force, the motor will do some extra force for you. And the last one was motion activated. So you will have to go, you know, half of turn off the pedals until it will assist and then it assists with whatever it wants. This is finer control. Third, the ball joints in the wishbones. Well, it's such an improvement before I was using ball bearings and there was a little bit of play in the axle. Now, I mean, there is no play. This is great, just super stiff and it's also easier to build like this. And the fourth major improvement have been the wheel hubs. This is such a great wheel hub for a trike. I just used the Canon de Lefty wheel hubs and there's just so, I mean, these wheels are so stiff and there's, I mean, the axle, everything works great. Uh, so I'm, this is a trike where I'm comfortable going fast, super sharp to maneuver, and I'm comfortable going off-road a little bit. It's great. And the fifth improvement, how could I forget? The cable steering, I just love it. Um, it's clean, it's lightweight, it's easy to make. I prefer it to the connection bar. I think probably from now on I'll just do cable steering. Before talking about the things that need to be fixed, I'll show you a minute of me riding in the woods. I think it's very nice footage and also I hope gives an idea on how cool it is to ride this thing.
Well, it's time to talk about those three things that need fixing to make this a product worthy design. In this test, I was trying to find how fast I can make a 90 degree corner. So what you see there is the outer wheel raising. This happens because the tilting mechanism has reached the end. And here you can see it reaching the end. The component that reaches the limit is the lower outer ball joints, which are capable of moving 30 degrees. This results in a maximum tilting of the vehicle of 12 degrees. So when you're doing a fast, tight turn, this happens. And it may look cool, but it's not. The behavior of the vehicle changes mid-turn and it's unexpected. So my conclusion is that this type of ball joint cannot be used here. So let's go into the tests that reveal the second thing that has to be fixed. And as I writhe, I notice that something is off. There's a noise and well, so I shake it like crazy to try... And there it is, the issue has revealed itself. In case you haven't seen it, yeah, that's a wheel flying off. So, the axle broke, that's what happened, and I have in front of me a long walk home. Well, this is embarrassing, given the start of the video. This is the best track I ever made. But uh, it still is. It's not a small thing that the axle broke. But uh, I know why. It's a clear design fault. I made it thinner. I made it 12 millimeters, just in the place where you fit in the knuckle. So actually made the most fragile point where it um, fits the knuckle and that's just a clear design um, error if i would if i keep the width or the diameter of the axle at the largest bearing which is 25 millimeters i think it would be very stiff and not break now I'm also considering making the axles out of steel instead of aluminium. Let me know what you think. In any case, I would have to redesign the knuckle, which leads me to improvement number three. The kingpin inclination, which is this angle here, I want to reduce this angle. So this angle is here to meet uh, zero scrub radius. So this line has to finish at the middle point of the tire. But the, the problem with the king pin inclination is when steering uh, far, the steering starts to become hard because it raises the vehicle when steering that last bit. So you have to change the kingpin inclination without sacrifice to the scrub radius. And the trick to do that is to raise the um, knuckle in relationship to the axle. And that will allow you to make a smaller angle while still m uh, making scrub radius equals to zero. And there's a fourth. I was counting on three improvements, but then the axle broke, and that was kind of the fourth. I want to improve the turning radius. What I think I have to do is to reduce the distance between the front axle and the turning pivot. This is because when this aligns, that's the end of the steering. So by approaching these two points, I think I can turn more without finishing the range of the steering. If you have some better ideas, I would love to hear about it. So you can find the final drawings on my website. And I've told you what improvements I think this needs. 
the drawings are in editable format, so you're welcome to give it a go. So the next video that I make will not have an ending like this, where I list, you know, the improvements that have to be made or things that have to be fixed. The next that I show to you will be what I think is product worthy design. Sure. Everything can be improved, but uh, the next one that I show will not have any fundamental flaw. Thank you for being interested in this project. If you like this video, please let YouTube know by pressing that like button. That helps. See me next time. Cheers.